Welcome once again to Minecraft Movie Reviews, where we look at movies while we try to survive in Minecraft. So, what movies are we looking at today? We're looking at an oldie from the archives known as From Beyond the Grave. This wonderfully macabre movie has one of my favorite actors in it, Peter Cushing. So what exactly is this movie? Well, this is an anthology movie, which means you're getting four stories, all tied together by one single string. But what is that single string? Well, we'll talk about that a little later in the review. So, we got four stories in this movie, but we're only going to talk about two of them, because why should I spoil them all for you? But let's move on to our first story, shall we? This one is called The Gate Crasher. So, let's say you happen to find a mirror that's worth a lot of money. What would you do? Well, obviously, you would lie to the man selling it and say it's a reproduction so you could get it cheaper. Hmm, what's that? You wouldn't? Well, our main character, Edward Charlton, would. And he certainly did, as you can see right here. Good morning, sir. Can I help you at all? Good morning. I was just looking at this mirror. Oh, it's a lovely piece, in fact, sir. Quite lovely. A little expensive, I'm afraid. How much are you asking for it? Two hundred and fifty pound. For this? You see, it's a genuine antique. Very old. Oh, come on. 
And look at the glass. Look at the back. It's been treated. I know my antiques. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 25 quid to get rid of it, what do you say? Very well. It's a deal. This guy didn't know the mirror was haunted by a murderous spirit, so I know what you're asking. Just what happens to Edward? Well, the man in the mirror. Mm -mm, not that one. The other man in the mirror. decides to use him for a little happy killing fun. But will Edward escape? Mm, you're gonna have to watch the movie and find out. So, let's move on to our next chilling little tale, shall we? Well, our next one will be called The Act of Kindness. Well, that doesn't sound like such a bad name, does it? Well, we have here our typical middle-aged little management man stuck in a loveless marriage with a brat of a son and a rather loud and annoying wife. Let's take a look, shall we? Matches. Dices. Matches. Dices. Matches. Dices. Thank you very much, sir. Or a gent. Not at all. Matches. Laces. Shoelaces. I bought them from one of those peddlers. A beggar? He's not exactly a beggar. He's got a license. They don't expect you to take anything, though, do they? <laughs> and how much did you give him? Twenty... Thirty, thirty pence. I expect he thought you were a ripe mug. Probably got more money than you'll see in a lifetime. A chap at school says he knows a man who sells matches by the station. And he has a Rolls Royce. I can't think matches and shoelaces are run Rolls Royces. Never heard of such nonsense. A few more mugs like you, he could run a fleet of them. Yes. 
sausages again? If you gave me a bit more money, you might get something better. Oh, I'll give you an adequate housekeeping allowance. Prices aren't what they used to be. Well, have you any complaints, then? Who do you think you're talking to in that tone of voice? Some of the girls at your office? To them, you may be the boss. But I know what you really are. A jumped-up clerk. That's all an office manager is. Oh, things were different when we got married. You were a sergeant in the pay corps. Soft job, civilian future. <laughs> Some future. Well, they won't be spoken to in this way. Don't you get violent with me. Get on with your dinner. We've seen this kind of thing before, haven't we? But we see our middle management man, known as Christopher, secretly has a heart of gold. Each day he gives money to a poor man who sells matches and laces. Each day he vis visits the matches seller and talks to him until he's invited over for tea. After all, they are British and tea is a must. Hmm. At least that's what Render keeps telling me. Anyway... Once they arrive for tea, he meets the merchant's pretty, albeit a little creepy, daughter, Emily. Emily, don't show yourself, my girl. This is the gentleman. My daughter, Emily. Lowe. Christopher Lowe. And my name is Underwood. Jim Underwood. Don't she make a smashing cake, sir? Oh, yes, indeed, yes. So we have an older gentleman and a young woman, so you know what that means. It's a fair time. Time to cheat on your wife. But... As I promised, this affair won't turn out the way you think. But you're going to have to find that out on your own, won't you? I should say, before we continue, each story in this anthology has some string that ties them all together, as I mentioned in the beginning. And that, well, that is Temptation LTD, a shop that sells antiques and things, which is fine, unless you try stealing or <laughs> ripping them off. Then you might be in a world of trouble. So, who's the next victim of temptation? Well, I'm not going to tell you guys. As I said before, you're going to have to find out on your own. And as always, you can pick up the movie from Warner Archives. A big thank you for them for letting me sneak into the archives and grab this movie. And what's going to be the next one? Well, you're just going to have to find out next time. See you, boils and ghouls. Well, hello, hello from the Waifu Army's leader, Purity Sin. Thank you again to Warner Archives for sending us the video to review, and a huge thank you to all you wonderful little sinners for watching. If you guys want to check out Warner Archives, of course, the link is in the description where it always is. They have thousands upon thousands of wonderful movies and cartoons, some you may have heard of, some you haven't, so go check them out. And if you guys want to support us, we'll be opening a Patreon soon. We also sell a couple of t-shirts and other things, and we're grateful for all the help we get. This is Purity Sin, and I'm signing out, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!